Hi everyone, welcome to our TNT. It's our Tuesday program and a lot of today is catching up on updates on news from yesterday. But we'll start up in Chiang Mai where there's been some quite uh, dramatic photos posted by a gentleman called Wiratet Tongsuwon and he's captured some of these uh, summer storms that have been well, wreaking havoc in some locations around certainly central and northern Thailand. It's that time of the year we're going through the transition from the northeast monsoon to the southwest monsoon and we get these rather sudden random summer storms and he caught some of the action up in Chiang Mai and some really dramatic photos indeed as those storms turned on a very dramatic light show and again the photographer Wiradet Tongsawan on his Facebook page and posted by the uh, Chiang Mai News Online. But a really great series of photos. And it's now time to get into some of the updates from yesterday. And we'll start with thenationthailand.com, or just nationthailand.com. Yet another construction accident on Rama 2 kills one worker and injures another. We showed you the dramatic footage of that uh, concrete falling. A huge chunk of the, uh, the overhead road falling onto uh, the construction area, killing one worker. The story says the Express Authority of Thailand has launched a probe into an accident on Sunday that saw a concrete beam falling onto the road at a construction site for the elevated railway over Rama 2 Road. The beam killed one worker, injured another, also damaged four passing vehicles in front of the Index Living Mall in Bangkok's Bangkuntian district. And witnesses say the slings holding the beam snapped causing it to fall along with the workers who were on the beam. The beam also blocked the far right lane of Rama 2 Road, causing a major traffic tail back on Sunday evening. And the Exat governor has named the companies involved. He said the project coordinator was CBT Consortium. They'll be responsible for compensating the deceased and injured workers, as well as the owners of the damaged vehicles. And the consortium comprises China Harbour Engineering Limited, Buriram Tong Chai Construction and and Tipakorn Limited. And the project includes the construction of an elevated highway over Rama 2 Road from central Rama 2 to the Bang Pakok 9 International Hospital. And the Rama 2 Road is notorious for a never ending construction work that's been blamed for multiple accidents. And yeah, it has been going on a long time. They've got kilometres, tens of kilometres of this overhead road construction. And it's all happening, of course, while the road and the traffic is continuing underneath. On March the 26th, inbound traffic was backed up for four kilometres after a trailer truck crashed into a construction site at the highway's KM16 marker. And in July last year, two people were killed and two injured when a beam fell on them from a U-turn bridge on Rama 2 Road. The article's also covered by Bangkok Post. Falling concrete slab kills worker on Rama 2 Highway. Much the same information. We read our story from nationthailand.com. Before we get on to our next story, just a really quick request, if you've got time, just to subscribe to the channel. And as I continually say, we're not going to send you emails. It doesn't cost you anything, but boy, does it help our cause here on the channel. If that's the least you can do, that's the least you can do and it would be appreciated. Now moving on to our next rather disturbing story, reported on Mail Online from the dailymail.co.uk and this has been used as source material for a number of local articles about the same story. And uh, this story, the headline is British boy 16 is found dead with head wounds in a Thai forest. Police hunt for teenager's missing girlfriend. Now we understand just reading through the story that uh, it looks like he's got a British British father and a Thai mother and a British teenager has been found dead with head wounds in a forest in Thailand. Police are now searching for his missing girlfriend. Watomet, who's also known as Ben, 16 years old, went for a motorcycle ride with Yam, also 16, in his hometown of Lampang on Saturday but didn't return home. Local police say they received a report on Sunday morning that Ben had been found dead in a grove in the Bantan district with injuries resembling blunt force. 
Officers reported the teenager's phone and cash were missing from his shoulder bag, suggested he might have been robbed. They believed he was killed elsewhere and left in the woods as there were no signs of a struggle. His partner has not been found as of today. And there's a photo there of young 16-year-old Ben. Actually, it looks like it, taken at the Death Railway in Kanchanaburi, where I was uh, last week. And that's a photo there of his missing girlfriend, also 16. And uh, police say the body has been taken to hospital for an autopsy. Police say we're currently tracking down individuals close to the victim, including his female companion. She's a key figure in this case since she's the last person to see him alive. And Ben's mother told police that her son had said goodbye to her on Saturday evening and said he was going to work with friends, but he did not give any more details to her. So a bit of a mystery there, what happened to the young gentleman, and uh, he has obviously a British passport, hence making its way into the Daily Mail, and that article has been used as source material in a number of local publications. Now, we uh, we should thank our sponsors, Five Star Marine. In the next uh, couple of days, we'll have a situation where uh, not only can you support Five Star Marine and thank them for supporting me for all this time but we're also going to have a discount for TNT viewers so if you make a booking through a link that'll be in the description not today but in coming days then you'll be able to get a discount when you come to Phuket and go on a magnificent private chartered tour. I should say that uh, the weather has been spectacular over the past few days. Uh, We are going through this transition period, but we've got the white fluffy clouds and the generally blue skies and the light winds. It's just a magical time and uh, nice to be topped off with a little bit of rain sometimes in the early morning or the evening just to sort of keep things a little bit cooler. It's a a great time of the year. Let's go on to our next story today and the BangkokPost.com reporting that the virus curbs set to return to schools. So a photo there of young students. Uh, a lot of Thai schools, you'll still see the students wearing face masks routinely. I think that situation is going to continue for quite a long time. International schools, less so. Uh, let's see what this story says. And the Education and Public Health Ministries have been told to ramp up COVID-19 control measures in schools due to concerns over a potential spike in infections when students begin returning to class later this month. Now, clearly, this is just precautionary, and we can't imagine that it's going to be going any further than just trying to protect students. Further down there, a deputy government spokeswoman says COVID-19 cases have been on the rise since the Songkran Festival last month, and the number look set to increase as Thailand is about to enter the rainy season, which is also known as the start of the flu season. Now, of course, a lot of you would be saying, well, look, the younger people don't seem to be affected much with COVID-19, but of course they can be infected and take the disease back home to their parents and their grandparents and older people living in the house hence the danger and according to the public relations department there were 1699 new infections between april 30 and last sunday an average of 240 per day and 10 deaths And since January 1st this year, just over 10,000 COVID-19 cases have been reported, along with nearly 300 deaths. So it looks like uh, some of the government schools could kick into a precautionary sort of situation, but I'm very sure it's not going to uh, fester any further than that. On to another story that we've been talking a lot about over the past two weeks. And the story reported in ThaiPBSWorld.com, Industrial Work Department to plug legal loophole on trading of cyanide. Now, a lot of people keep on sort of wondering what in earth private citizens would be wanting cyanide for. A bit of explanation in this article. Thailand's Industrial Works Department has promised to tighten regulations, making it compulsory for importers of cyanide to report to the authorities every sale of the lethal chemical to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. The Director General of the Department also said the Department will coordinate with the Office of Consumer Protection Board to increase measures to regulate online and direct sales of cyanide. 
Of course, there's a fear in these situations because of all the publicity. Other people might get ideas. And further down, according to the Director General, the department has issued 54 permits to 14 companies to import cyanide, mainly for industrial and laboratory use. There are also about 2,000 smaller users, mainly in the gold plating business. He admitted, however, there is a legal loophole exempting importers from having to report any sale of cyanide, which is less than 100 kilograms, to the department. 100 kilograms of cyanide is a lot, adding that the loophole must be closed immediately. He said that even though the advertising of cyanide is prohibited, it appears the dangerous chemical has been offered for sale online adding that this will also have to be dealt with through coordination with the Office of the Consumer Protection Board, which is in charge of enforcing the law governing direct and online sales. So as the investigation continues on this uh, woman known as Am Cyanide and her victims, I think we're up to 14 now at the moment, uh, it looks like the government's trying to close up some loopholes and limit the distribution of cyanide in the future. You're watching TNT as we go to our next story, and this reported in Thai PBS World, no plan to impose departure tax on outbound ties. That's from the Revenue Department. So we went out of our way yesterday to try and make sure people understood that the Revenue Department had said they're not going to impose this departure tax, and also to make sure that people understood that it was only for Thais and also resident expats living in Thailand as they departed. Not foreign tourists. Now, everybody got all lemon-lipped. Oh, it's just a cash grab. They're greedy. And I'm sure they didn't either even read the article or watch the program. They just saw the word departure tax and jumped to the conclusion. But uh, Thai PBS World have gone further, reporting that it's not going to happen. Thailand's Revenue Department has no intention, it says, of imposing a departure tax on Thai nationals and permanent foreign residents travelling out of Thailand, as has been wildly misunderstood. The Revenue Department's Deputy Director said in a statement it was issued on Sunday that they're merely gathering public opinion about the proposed departure tax of 1,000 baht for air travel, 500 baht for land and sea travel, as part of a legal process in line with constitutional requirements to assess the impact of the proposal. So uh, just to fill out the paperwork and do what was required by their job in doing some sort of online survey, looks like a lot of people did misunderstand the situation. And the Revenue Department say the statement was in response to uproar among tourism-related businesses and public misunderstanding. So I think we can all cool our heels on this uh, this departure tax survey. It doesn't look like anything is going to happen according to the Revenue Department anyway. Nobody else seems to be talking about it. Now, you have been paying, whether you know it or not, a departure tax for quite a while. It's a 700 baht departure tax that, uh, well, even since I was coming to Thailand back in 2000, I was aware that I was paying when I was leaving the country this 700 baht departure tax, which was included in the uh, the departure airfare. So uh, it's been there for a long time and people haven't been complaining too much about that. The only other one we need to worry that we know is on the books is this arrival tax. If, if the government can get their shit together, it was meant to start on June the 1st. It's now been pushed forward and uh, we haven't heard any more about any proposed start dates as the government still tries to figure out exactly how they're going to collect it without impacting on the local ties, which is what they've said. And to our next story now, and this published in ThaiExaminer.com, the headline, Crackdown on Foreign Tourism Abuses with Police in Hotspots Targeting Chinese and Russian Gangs. So please, 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 Thai Examiner, uh, just one word, WordPress. Uh, whatever you're using for your layouts at the moment, you really need to update it. You've had that same add-on uh, that on, always on the front page, find your Thai love lines. Obviously, they must be making a few bucks out of that. Anyway, let's get to their story, which is a quite an important story. 
says the crackdown involves targeting firms licensed in the foreign tourism sector run by foreigners that are not on a pre-approved list. So some things foreigners can't do here in Thailand. While police and tourist hotspots such as Phuket are also reigning in the illegal involvement of foreigners staying on extended visas in commercial activities related to the industry, especially residents from China, Russia, I think it should be Russia, and Eastern Europe. Okay, so an important story. Let's get into some of these specifics. And it says Thai authorities last week announced the closure of a Thai registered tourism business, which ran up 14 million baht in unpaid debt and the withdrawal of the firm's license by the Ministry of Tourism. The news comes as a nationwide crackdown by police forces and government inspectors has also been launched into abuses within the foreign tourism industry, particularly in tourism hotspots such as Phuket, where foreigners, notably Russian nationals, on extended stays on the island, have begun to undertake unregulated and illegal commercial activities linked with the tourism industry. The moves are also being accompanied by a renewed crackdown and tightening of regulation in the visa regime. Okay, plenty of words there, uh, all in one great big block. Now, I'll put a link in the description because it's an important story, not particularly well laid out, and it is a bit repetitive, but it's got some, uh, some important things that we should note. The story goes on, the news follows reports that Ministry of Tourism and Sports officials are currently liaising with counterparts in China to put a stop to a resurgence of zero dollar tours. So we'll go through that in just a moment. These operations are seen as a threat to Thailand's critical and foreign exchange earning industry. They've also led to extensive negative coverage of Thailand on Chinese social media networks. A lot of Chinese are the victims when it comes to zero, zero dollar tourism. The Thais don't get anything out of it. The Chinese are the ones that are fleeced. And the only people making any money are the people selling the tours. And fear mongering, fake news and disinformation is being stoked in China against visiting Thailand over the zero dollar tourism phenomena. Zero dollar tour schemes, this is a bit of a definition if you want, operated by large Chinese operators, lure Chinese holidaymakers to Thailand with tour prices, including flights and accommodation, which are sold below cost while the visitors are later forced to follow a set itinerary, including shopping tours at designated locations designed to recoup the loss and leave the tour firms with an even greater profit than normal tours through inflated pricing and heavy-handed pressure on visitors during the trip. Now, I should mention that these zero-dollar tours are not just being done by the Chinese. Other uh, nationalities are now getting involved in it where they pre-sell these cheap tours back in the home country. And when they come here, the actual tourists get a very poor experience, forced around to a preset itinerary and, well, pretty much they're fleeced. They certainly don't have a good holiday. And uh, just under the, uh, the paragraph I just read, zero dollar tours have returned. And it's not just tourists from China that are being abused by this commercial scam that damages Thailand's reputation. And Phuket Tourist Police Force has launched a campaign at the end of April with a renewed interest in the visa status of all foreigners working on the island. And just below that, this follows reports from tourist hotspots that the zero dollar tour concept is now being used by criminal gangs in Eastern Europe and South America targeting Thailand. So the tourists are coming back and inevitably so are the scams. I'll put a link in the description of this video for that thaiexaminer.com story. And uh, yeah, WordPress, okay, WordPress. It's not that difficult. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I uh, really appreciate you dropping in each day, catching up with the latest Thai news. Hopefully, you're a bit more up to date. Please subscribe to the channel. A big thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine, and stand by in the next few days for that link in the description, which will give you a discount anytime you book with Five Star Marine. But for now, have a fantastic Tuesday, and we'll see you tomorrow.